I'll give you a piece of it. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee came to him with her two little boys. They hadn't grown up yet. That was James and John. And kneeling before him, she asked a favor of him, and he said to her, what do you want? She said to him, declare that these two little boys of mine will sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your kingdom. But Jesus answered, you do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am about to drink? And then it's about the same thing from there on out. The significant difference here is that mommy brings the boys to Jesus, right? These are the same two guys that Jesus selected to go up with him to the Mount of Transfiguration treating all three of them special, including Peter. I wonder what in the world Peter was thinking while these two guys were trying to nuzzle up to Jesus. There's a good probability that some scholars point out that Salome, S-A-L-O-M-E, was actually not only the mother of James and John, but she was the sister to Mary, the mother of Jesus. I mean, you can feel all kinds of collusion <laughs> being attempted here, right? Mm -hmm. When you come into your kingdom, we want to sit, one at your left hand, one at your right hand. The left hand was an extension of the left side of the master, and the right hand was the right side of the master, and the master really wouldn't do anything unless these two guys were in sympathy with him. I mean, this is about as grimy as you can get. Remember, it was just a couple weeks ago that Jesus explained to the, explained to the disciples what he was going to do. He was going to be betrayed. They were going to spit on him. They were going to beat him. They were going to crucify him, and then they were going to bury him. It was just a week or so before that Jesus already dealt with this inside conflict that always destroys instead of helps. It always destroys instead of helps. And so we have these two different renditions of the same story, nothing contradicts each other, except that mommy shows up to help the boys present their request to the Lord Jesus. So in the final analysis, it's James and John that Jesus actually talks to. After they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. And he said to them, what is it that you want me to do for you? And they said, grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, you do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they replied, we are able. Did you ever sing that song? Are you able, said the master, to be crucified with me? Yea, the sturdy dreamers answer, now as then in Galilee, Lord, we are able, our 
But that's a great song. That's a great song. And uh, every time we sing it, of course, we get the picture of James and John trying to nuzzle up to Jesus and get their own way. What James doesn't know is that shortly after the crucifixion and resurrection of Christ, he himself is going to drink the cup. He himself is going to be baptized. He becomes the first Christian martyr. The king kills him. So what he was begging for, he got. But he had a different concept. One of significance and importance and grandeur being heaped upon himself. But it didn't take him long to catch on that his head was on the chopping block. I like that text. I enjoy it. It was only at that point that the other ten disciples catch on. I mean, they obviously had been standing there listening to everything that was going on. But they were shocked to the core when they understood that these two guys were asking for a place of prominence in the new kingdom. Only this time, they brought Mama. And there are scholars out there who agree that Salome was also a sister to the mother of Jesus. I mean, this is real rank collusion. And that's what they're trying to do is to take their family and bring it into play in order to get a position of great power themselves. Uh, I am not what you call a scholar sufficiently to pass judgment on these professionals who suggest that, but it does sound interesting to me. It, it, it at least gives James and John an excuse for being such rude people. They go breaking in in front of the other disciples and say, give us a position that's going to be over them. But we turn thumbs down on all gossip, don't we? We turn thumbs down on all nasty talk. We've got to do that because that gives us access to the Holy Spirit. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. Jesus came to give his life for us, and the way we can demonstrate our belief and enthusiasm about that is to become a slave 
to other people. That's a good story, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's a good story and it encourages our hearts to lay off the gossip and become a lover of people. Amen.